Uh, hello to you, soul brothers and sisters, and uh, welcome to another episode of a spiritual awakening journey. And this is the third episode with our dear friend, Michael Everard. So in the first Thank episode, you. hello, Michael. In the first ep episode, we have seen the life of Michael growing up. Uh, and the challenges he went through and the weird things he saw. In the second episode, we saw how divine intervention came to make him stop whatever he was doing. And thoughts and ideas started outpouring, outpouring, and he started writing his uh, books, Why Are We on Earth? And we're going to uh, continue from here. And we're going to link the dots between many ideas that we have discussed before. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button, please. It's free. Let the video become available to as many people as possible. Hit the like. Write any comments uh, if you feel, uh, I mean... Uh, uh, you want to share your thoughts, your ideas, if you feel you relate with whatever we are talking about. Michael, hello again, and thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. Um, so, yeah, my books, um, my the first trilogy that I started is called Sight, Sound, Spirit, and it includes um, three titles. Um, the first title is Why Are We Here on Earth? The second title is how life works and the third uh and final i'm just gonna say book of the sight sound spirit um trilogy is called all that exists that's going to be released on april 9th of this particular year which is right around the corner and i'm looking forward to that that's going to complete uh the three year anniversary of this journey that I've taken so three number three yeah so yeah. so I'm excited for that um and then um I'm working on seven other books sort of a in a simultaneous fashion that um are going to uh complete a series of of 10 books in total and we're talking um gosh all sorts of topics regarding consciousness and awareness and sentience and spirituality and even physics. So I, I've, I've spent a lot of time um, deep in thought. And as I think about these things, I'm getting the downloads from source. And, you know, a lot of people understand source as being the Akashic records and all of these things that I'm using all of the information that I'm sharing with people is uh, is important. You know, um, my ideas and uh, thoughts regarding um, everything from let's say quantum mechanics to uh, you know just the basics of of religion have been important to me because I feel like there's a lot of disinformation that is out there. So I, I want people to understand the truth as I see it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though I am not, uh, I'm going to say classically trained in physics, uh, my, my thoughts are uh, basically everything going, leading up to uh, trigonometry. I never got into calculus because uh, my my final year of high school, I thought, ah, you know, I don't really need that. That's, you know, whatever. So I, I merged into uh, the realm of of English and, and and literature and all of those things. So starting someone else will be with, doing these downloads. Someone else what's that? Doing, someone else will be doing these downloads, you know? Because we are yeah. putting the pieces of the puzzle together, you are you are giving a certain corpus of data, and someone else yeah. will give other stuff and yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So I have, I have, uh, I have 
the ultimate faith in uh, my fellow physicists that do understand the intricacies of mathematics. My understanding of mathematics is very simple. Um, you know, I believe that zero is somewhat equal to one. Um, I reduce the complexity of everything that I observe because I learned how to understand uh, a, 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 an experiment called the double slit experiment that studies how light behaves. And what I did with that was um, I, I basically wrote about it and I've written about that several times, including something called the observer effect, which means that whatever you observe, you alter that experience just by the act of observation. Yeah. Right. And, and Greg so, Baden and the whole guys, bunch of guys are talking about it. The observers effect. I mean, how yeah. the particles react differently when there is someone observing them. Yeah. 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 And, and what's interesting about that is um, a lot of physicists believe that quantum mechanics has to do with probability. Uh, what what is even more interesting, it's not a matter of if something will happen, it's always been a matter of when it will happen. So when you observe something, you're interacting with it. And when you interact with it, you're creating that reality for yourself. And a lot of people have this other idea that, well, you know, there are, um, there's, there's the, you know, what we can say is the absolute truth. And then we have, you know, various, uh, perspectives, which is the angle at which you view the observation, and then your perceptual lens basically um, brings into focus whatever it is that you're observing. And when you do that particular task without any form of judgment or anything um, that would uh, be related to, uh, you know, the idea that you're, you're, you're telling you're telling God or the universe that what you're seeing um, just doesn't make any sense. Well, if you do that, then what you're actually doing is you're saying no thank you to whatever it is that you're observing. Um, I like to work on two concepts. I, I, I believe that the lesson for all of humanity is to do one thing, and that's love all. Now, if you know how to do that, and you can also use discernment where if something doesn't resonate with you and you don't want it, then you can say, no, thank you. You don't have to stay attached to it. Yeah, you can without the on. feeling of, no, this feeling of, it, it yeah. is attachment, actually. Yeah. 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 So you don't, yeah. you don't have quality. to like everything. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you do and should love all and you can also use discernment you don't have to, so for example i don't like to see people suffer i don't like to see uh innocent beings abused i don't like a lot of things however i've learned to accept them as being a part of this bigger picture to understand reality in a manner that we can accept uh a couple of, of, of things. And those things are physicality and non-physicality. And if we understand that quantum mechanics, for example, is the realm of imagination, and we're using the math to uh, better understand what that means, well, you don't necessarily have to know exactly how the math works you just have to know that it is working and that there are a lot of pieces that are um, sort of falling into place and for me the writing that I've been working on uh, for almost three years now and, and it seems crazy that 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 number three it keeps on popping up um, what's what's interesting about it is that everything is information. So information is in a state of transformation. And if we if we focus on what the information is telling us, 
And what it is showing us is that the one thing that everything has in common is motion. Every, everything is in motion. Everything is moving. Everything uh, is in you know, states of, of being. Um, everything is a part of the bigger picture. And emotions are basically uh, energy. It's, it, it's energy in motion. So for, for me or you or any human that has that ability to um, transform the information into other pieces of data that will make sense to us, what we're really doing is reducing the complexity of the light forms and we're changing them into sound forms. So there, there is always a, a coexistence of those two things. And, and I, I've written about this so many times that, uh, you know, I, I've sort of, I'm going to just say lost track of, you know, how deep down this rabbit hole I've gone. This is, yeah, yeah. If you allow me to put a, huh? I need yeah. a parenthesis here to make things clearer for the audience. So, I mean... You remember, guys, when we started at the beginning, uh, we were talking about we were born here and we thought we had this one life and we go to school, university, get married, get the car, get the job and so on. And in in our generation, we had uh, no social media, no social media and the, the, the World Wide Web made things faster, our access to knowledge, to things and uh, and. Uh, the discoveries, the quantum physics, I mean, within a short span of time, so much information going there. So when Michael says he's receiving all this, you say it's the Akash to me, I would rather say source because I took a course in Akashic records. It's rather sure. the, the storage place. So, uh, and to say that we are not going nuts, that Michael is not going nuts, if you allow me, Michael, uh -huh. Uh, we have uh, have connected with Michael before I gave him a session. It's like an energy thing. Uh, I do energy uh, clearing, hearing, and so on. And uh, Michael is in a country. We have time difference, eight hours time difference, right? He's in California. I'm located in Turkey. This is not my country. I'm just here running away from wherever I am. <laughs> uh -huh. And... How do you explain it, guys? What I'm trying to say now is Earth is expanding in consciousness. I mean, we're receiving more lights. People are awakening that we're not just in a small box. And this is the corpus of knowledge that Michael is sharing with us. And when I connected with Michael and we did the session, we were, we connected etherically. And because Michael's third eye is open, he was able, I mean, we we're located in different countries and we were both able to see and sense our multidimensionality. And this is what he detected in the three candles, actually, when he saw when he was three years old. Right, Michael? So yes. basically, it's not just with Michael. Whenever I do this session in with anyone in any country, if their third eye is open, we can connect in ether, via ether. If they're not, nothing. They don't feel anything. They feel that I did nothing. <laughs> so yeah. whatever I'm saying here the, in the parentheses is that Michael is not hallucinating, guys. There are millions of people of us out there who are already starting to get connected yes. via ether to one another telepathically i'm connecting to a cat can you believe she comes in the elevator to the seventh floor whenever i think that i have food for her she comes to the seventh floor and she comes to eat i mean this stuff is insane and we are only what touching the peak of the iceberg right I mean, yes. there is much, much more to this. I'm sorry for this parenthesis because I, and it's now fine. we need to link it to your, uh, because I'm linking it to previous videos. So wherever Michael is now downloading is real. Uh, each person will be downloading a specific corpus of data and these people will be 
sharing their piece of the puzzle for the earth to awaken more and more and remember who we are because we have dropped down deep, deep, deep into separation. We played mm -hmm. the game, we enjoyed it, but it's now time to come back again. And this is ascension to remember again, correct? Yes. Can you share with us briefly, Michael? So what's happening on Earth now? Why? I mean, I was in deep in the matrix. I thought I got to go to school, study and do this. And then the universe, boom, 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 stopped me from doing anything. And I started, you know, learning all that and reconnecting again. And wow, I'm multidimensional. I can talk to Michael in California and to I don't know who in Canada and in, in, I don't know who in Singapore without even, I mean, etherically, what's happening? What is happening? Well, and uh, how is your contribution important in that? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I feel like my, my position is one of, of simply being a messenger i'm here to share information now do i know everything there is to know about the universe as a whole no do i know more than many yes what i think is important to keep in mind is that i have a certain level of uh, humbleness and uh, I'm, I'm eternally grateful to be alive. I'm, I'm just simply happy to share this information and to be able to do so. Now, with all of that being said, I feel like the, the important part of, of what I'm sharing is that people can know one thing for 100% certainty, and that's how they are currently feeling. If you know how you are currently feeling and you also understand that everything in the universe is sentient and that means that everything has the ability to know what it needs to do in order to exist, whether it's organic or inorganic, and, and that includes water, that includes rocks, that includes the trees, the animals, everything is one, everything is unified. The other thing that I came to understand about what the soul is, um, it has to do with communication. So the holy communion uh, or communication between any living being and God has to do with the soul contract, the, the soul source um, everything is basically one soul. And there are almost 8 billion different human spirits that are perceiving reality in their own manner. Now, does that mean that everything um, is connected to God? Yes. Does that mean that God is knowing all that there is to know? Yes. Is God omnipotent? Yes. Is God, uh, and, and we already described it, omniscient? Yes. Is God everywhere? Yes. So if we know that, and we know that the soul, and, I, and I've written about this um, in, in one of my books, uh, the, the, the soul, I, I believe it was 11 articles that I wrote about the soul. The, the soul, there, there's lots of questions that we can ask about the soul. What I've come to understand is that there's one soul, and it's God. God communicates through the soul. And if we understand that we are individual human spirits, each with the ability to ask God whatever we want, then that is important to know if we know that and we know that god loves us there's really nothing that we there's nothing that we cannot do there's nothing that we cannot know there's nothing that we can do that would make god upset however god is going to 
either like or dislike what we do here on earth. Now, if God likes what we're doing and we're connected with God and we've surrendered to God's will, then everything will seem to fall into place. We will learn how to thrive. We will learn how to connect with other people. And we will learn how to simply be human. Now, the other thing that I've come to understand is that while everything in the universe is sentient, only humans are potentially sapient. When you're sapient, you know how to use your taste and your uh, all of your senses and be aware of them so yeah. that so that you can you know interact with other beings. You can choose to perceive reality however you want, and this is where, where free will comes yeah. into play. So humans have free will. Um, you may not believe that. You may not think that. But it's the truth. Now, if you know how to use your free will to surrender to God's will, now we're talking a whole other, you know, just mind-blowing expansion. But that's because people feel they are separate from God. They are in this thing that we are separate from God. So yeah. they think God is telling us what to do. And they're here. The ego comes. And why is he telling me I want to do However, when we awaken, when we start the journey of awakening, we understand we are one with God. The way I see it, my higher self, my higher highest self is in God already. And mm -hmm. the higher self, and then the, you have levels. We There is source and source expands, like the branches of the tree, and then expands and expands and expands. So there are many levels of me up there and and my higher self already decided for me what I need to learn in this lifetime, which experiences I need to go to uh, go through to expand and to learn and to grow. So when we understand it this way, we do not feel that God is punishing us. On the contrary, when we connect with our highest self, we feel love. We feel love, yeah. we, feel, we yes. feel it in your heart. And yes. then you flow, then you suddenly flow. And you mentioned here, you ask, Jesus said, ask and you'll be given, but not ask for I need a Harley Davidson or it's not that. It is, yeah. <laughs> it's rather yeah. when you are one with your higher self, then you ask the right questions yes. and from the heart and then you will get them. Maybe you are supposed to go through something hard, difficult trial, because you need to learn something in your soul journey so that you collect all this data back to source again. And the way I see it, each one of us is a dot, is a cell from source. So we are source. Yes, yes. And, you know, the... The one of my favorite uh, passages uh, of all time is Matthew 7, 7, ask and ye shall receive, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door will be open. So, you know, going back to my training as, 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 a, as a sales person, um, you know, what, what are you what are you asking for? Well, you're asking for information. That, that's the first thing. The second thing is, what are you seeking? Well, you hopefully hopefully you're seeking the truth. And then um what door will be open? Well, the door of perception is open to any who are able to see. And if you're able to see and know the truth, then you're able to connect with God. You're able to understand that God loves you. There's nothing that you can do uh, that would make God upset with you or make God not love you. Now, will God like what he sees? Probably not a hundred percent of the time, but if you pay attention and you listen, you will know that God does not punish you. You punish yourself. Yeah. You said it. I was thinking about it. I was waiting for it. It is us that are cruel with our own self. It yeah. is us that we lack the compassion to self, the forgiveness to self. And in Course in Miracles, Jesus says, forgive and let go, forgive and let go. And First, forgive yourself and about coming here and uh, 
that, that being in this body is only a small dot of the I am, that I am of the person that I am. So the different levels going back to spirit. Same here, Michael is a tiny dot of the various lives of Michael going back to source. So I'm sorry, I did a little parenthesis, but when we feel this and when we connect, we feel the love and we understand, this is where I go back to detachment. This is where we feel, okay, I, I, I no longer need to be attached to this cup, you know, I'm, I'm taking much, much more from all that. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, and now what? So basically now what we do with all of our experiences is we continue to expand our awareness. We continue to communicate with God. We ask the, the, the great questions, not just the good questions, but the great questions, the existential questions. Um, you know, the, the question like, why, why are we here on earth? The, the title of, of my first book, um, you know, that question is, is, is one of my favorites. Um, you know, I, I like to ask great questions. Um, my favorite all-time question is why does it exist? My second favorite question is why not? So I like to ask those questions. And once I accept the answers as being truthful and every, everything that we experience, everything that we observe is the truth because it's not up to us to uh, quantify or qualify what we're observing uh, unless we're reducing the complexity of the information so that it does make more sense. When something makes sense, it's because, uh, and, and people talk about it all the time, you know, um, you know, what, what is common sense? Well, common sense means that you are using your, your faculties, all of your, you know, uh, your, all of your senses to understand what you're what you are observing as as far as it is being real and um every everything that we experience is a gift everything is a treasure everything is is precious if we allow it to be and if we judge other people or things or places then we get stuck we suffer we uh, become attached, you know, all of all of the all of the things that make us um, who yeah. and what we are, you know, become become more real as yeah. as we experience them. So yeah. for me, for me, it's it's a matter of of we just have six knowing. Minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so for me, it's it's a matter of knowing um, knowing uh, who and what I am and accepting. Um, why I am here. Um, in terms of, you know, the completion of this whole thing, um, I recently, uh, on January 20th, uh, which happened to be my 53rd birthday, had four seizures. I remember almost nothing of the time period after I did an interview for um, a job that I, I work at the, the regional, the San Gabriel Pomona Regional Center. Um, I spent about three hours interacting with people, not remembering any of it. Oof. Uh, I was taken to the hospital um, by my wife Oof. and they found that I have a glioblastoma tumor, so cancer. Wow. And um, the the tumor was removed and I've seen a handful of doctors in the meantime. Um, my wife and I are still dealing with insurances and things that will allow us to attend a certain place called city of hope. And my thought is that, um, that will happen and things happen for a reason. And my prognosis is that I've been given two years uh, through which to continue to do what I meant to do. And that includes the writing. And, How do you feel uh, about that? 
How do you feel about that? I, Are I, you in flow feel, or in resistance? I, I feel actually very liberated. I, you know, um, I had um, a seizure last night when I was oh uh, eating, eating with, uh, eating dinner with my wife. Mm. And, um, you know, that was a little bit of a, uh, an, an alarming situation because mm. the onset of the seizure. Now, the other four seizures I, I was not aware of. This one I was, and I felt it coming on. I was like, oh, here we go. Mm. And it was actually a pleasant experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, pleasant. Which is, which, yeah, which is kind of funny because, you know, the, the treatment that they're offering um, includes chemo pills, radiation therapy, and the use of a helmet so i will have to shave my head and all that good stuff it's, it's very um, very difficult and and let me tell you michael so many light workers way showers people like you uh i'm hearing about them they are having cancer as well this is like this is like you go like nuts like what so yeah how do you feel about it that's the most I feel important. great you feel like i, I feel bit? i, I feel uh, quite liberated um uh, one one of my friends that I consider a spiritual mother, Rosemary Rapsioni, um, uh, she she's great. She has helped me understand that you know there's a difference between knowing um, who and what I am and accepting God's will. And then I also have come to know that you know my acceptance of God's will does not necessarily mean that, I, I mean, nobody knows how long they have. I don't know if I'm going to live tomorrow. It is total surrender, first total surrender, acceptance, total being in flow, and no one knows. The energies are changing. Yeah. Some new things might happen. So you mm -hmm. live the moment, you enjoy the now. Mm -hmm. And because if you keep thinking, I only have two years, you are manifesting it to the world via your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So it is just like a happy event is. This also is. And let's hope and let's all send prayer and love to Michael. Supporting yeah. Michael so that yeah. he is as loved and uh, as possible. And uh, Michael, we have uh, three minutes left. Would you like to okay. your final uh, thoughts? Yeah, I, my final uh, my final statement um, is very simple. Um, learn whatever you're meant to learn by asking God the existential questions. If you don't believe that God exists, that's okay as long as you appreciate whatever it is that you're experiencing. Um, there are almost 8 billion different perceptions of God. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And if you, um, if you commit suicide and, and, and you do that because you have decided that this isn't for you, then you get to come back and, and you get and to come a, back, you incarnate yeah. and you have to learn the lessons that you try to avoid anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so you come back and, and you, do it all over but with a with kind of like a, a fresh uh a fresh mind and and all of that and uh and there is yeah, no from, judgment and god is never in judgment in any of that yes correct correct so so for me i i like to uh i like to learn i like to grow and i like to i like to know things i like to learn and expand my awareness and i feel like that's my job my, we are doing position. it perfectly, and who knows yeah. what the universe will be giving. Will That's it. do not think of the two years. This is the doctor's yeah. words. You do not know what the universe does. It's awesome know. that you are talking and you are in flow. You are in acceptance. You continue mm -hmm. doing whatever you are doing. The great things you are doing, uh, dear uh, friends and audience. Uh, um, uh, information about Michael would be below uh, if you want to uh, check his work and everything and Michael uh, let's finish with a sincere prayer from the heart let us all send love and healing because I believe when we 
as brothers and sisters send love and healing to a person with all our heart, this is energy. It goes to the person. Let us all send together, wherever you are, love and healing energies to our brother Michael, who is part of who we are. He's part of us. We wrap him with our unconditional, pure, divine love. And with all the healing energies that we have for him. May God, may Source, give you the patience and the wisdom necessary for your journey. And thank you for being with me, Michael. Thank you. All right. So All right. have a nice day. Have a nice evening. And have the greatest day of your life starting right now. Yeah, yeah. Starting right now. Every second counts. Bye-bye. Yes. All right.